addictive drug took surfaces in Gauteng, fueling fears that pushers have found a new market. The defense minister wants to know why it cost over 4 million rand to fly the deputy president to Europe. And Sean Bartlett saves the day for Chiefs in the Soweto Derby showdown against Pirates. This is E! News Prime Time. Hello and welcome. Police fear the highly addictive drug tick is finding a market in Gauteng. They've raided two drug laboratories this week and seized chemicals used to manufacture tick. Tick abuse is on the rise in the Western Cape, where experts say it has reached epidemic proportions. This is crystal methamphetamine, more commonly known as tick. It's cheap and relatively easy to manufacture. Chemicals used to produce tick can be found in most homes. These include cough mixture and chlorine. Experts say tick is an underlying cause of 40% of violent crime in the Western Cape. And now, they are fears the drug is making its way to Gauteng. Gauteng police swooped on two drug laboratories this week. At both locations, they seized mandrax and chemicals used to produce tick. Police say tick production has increased in Gauteng over the past few years, but it hasn't reached the same levels as in the Western Cape. They attribute the high rate of tick usage in that province mainly to its gang culture. Detectives are now concerned that drug addiction is fueling crime in Gauteng. The drugs have uh, different effects on different people. So it is difficult to say exactly what type of crimes, but they could be violent, serious and violent crimes, it could be theft, it could be housebreaking. Anti-drug organization Sanka says 6% of people treated for addiction in Gauteng since 2004 were hooked on tick. Telltale signs of tick abuse include insomnia, lack of appetite and aggression. Sanka says long-term use could result in irreversible damage and even death. And you almost get into this whole spiral of everything life revolves around getting that high all the time. And you're causing damage to, to your organs, to your, to your heart, to your brain. The streets of Gauteng may not yet be flooded with tuk. And drug help groups say communities and the police have to double their efforts to prevent its spread. But drug dealers are looking for new markets. And the warning is clear. Don't try this highly addictive drug and take action if you suspect friends or family may be abusing the substance. Dumale Mushaudi, E! News, Johannesburg. The Defence Department is investigating the Deputy President's recent trip to Europe. Defence Minister Monsieur Lakota says the four and a half million rand price tag is too high. But he says Pumzila Mlambunguka is not to blame. The Deputy President had offered to travel on a commercial flight, but the law requires that the Defence Ministry takes responsibility for her transportation and a charter plane had been hired to fly her to Britain. Earlier this year, Mlambo Nuka was slammed for using an Air Force plane on an unofficial visit to the United Arab Emirates. That trip is said to have cost the taxpayer 700,000 rand. The double murder of a mother and her baby has rocked a quiet seaside town. The young woman and her one-year-old daughter were found buried in a shallow grave. Police have arrested close family members of the victims. It's here the two bodies were found. 22-year-old Nombusa Payani and her daughter Asakamia went missing last Sunday. When they still hadn't turned up by midweek, residents feared the worst and started searching the area. One women have been seeing a lot of flies there and immediately have been called the men was also present in that. So the two uh, old men have been calm and they have their uh, stocks and with the stocks that the, the sun was so soft 
After digging for a short while, the men uncovered a human hand and called the police. Investigators say Tayani's hands were bound and it appears she'd been beaten and strangled. They aren't yet sure just how little Asakamia was killed. Her body was so badly decomposed it was no longer in one piece. The one-year-old's dad and uncle are now the prime suspects. Both were arrested last week and are due to appear in the Friedenberg court on Monday. The house where the couple lived is now a crime scene. It remains locked as forensic investigators continue to search for evidence. Police say they found blood in one of the bedrooms and believe the victims were killed here before being buried in a field across the road. Robin Smith, E! News, Soldana Bay. Well, just how safe are tourists going to be this festive season? Well, Durban's off to a bad start. Just a day after officials announced a new security plan, a visiting French sports official was gang raped. Durban's been hosting disabled swimmers from around the world. The International Paraplegic Swimming Championships was a publicity coup, but it's now put the city in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. Earlier this week, two officials from the French national team were attacked on the beachfront. They'd gone for an evening stroll in the promenade near their hotel, an area that's become notorious for violent crime. The woman was allegedly gang raped while her companion was pinned down. Police have arrested four suspects. Two are apparently turning state's witness. I think that this probably happens on a, on a more regular basis than is, than is actually publicised and, and that's an issue that we need to look at. Um, so unless we actually know what is happening or what is not happening, it's difficult to address the, the, the issues you know, from a security perspective. These are traveller safety tips left in the rooms of this beachfront hotel. Warning in four languages, including French, not to wander alone on the streets, especially after dark. Ironically, city officials announced on Monday that beachfront security had been improved. More police are on patrol, supported by private security guards. There's also 24-hour CCTV surveillance. But none of this helped the French swimming officials. And with the IPC swimmers on their way home, what message are they taking back to their countries? Morgan Collins, E! News, Durban. Oh, and E! News prime time continues. Road safety warnings fall on deaf ears as the accident death toll climbs to over 200.